Hi, my name is Steven and I am a staff member here at UCI's INRF and Bion facility. This is the training video for the photo bonding system made by UCIO. We are here in the Bion facility outside room 1401 where I will take you through the standard operating procedures of uh, the tool. First we will go over the introduction to the tool and then get into the details of how to operate the tool. Please remember there is also reference documentation online both on the Forge system as well as the INRF website. So consult those, especially the standard aid operating procedures. And we'll go in now. So everything kind of in this region here is part of the Ushio photo bonding system. We have two layers to the table. Uh, the main bonding unit is this unit here. It is powered, and a lot of components here are powered by the red transformer under the photo bonding unit. We have a temperature controller as well as an anomalous temperature monitoring unit. These will be used to control the temperature if desired any different from room temperature for your substrates. Next to that we have the Exmer photon source power supply. This is the power supply that uh, supplies the power to the Exmer photon source which is used to irradiate your substrates. Uh, lastly, the exhaust hookup is here on the left side of the unit and runs to our house exhaust. Uh, located across the tool, across from the tool, sorry, is the cabinet here. Where inside you might find some extra miscellaneous components that could be useful in operating the equipment. We have a, a wrench, some Allen wrenches, as well as a parts box. I'm going to get some parts ready now for the rest of the operating of the tool. Okay, now we will start going through the standard operating procedures and tell you what to do once you are ready to start using the tool. Um, like most pieces of equipment, in the shared facility, what you will want to do is check the status of the tool and verify that it's in proper idle state. Um, but even before that, and in, as part of that, you might want to go to the Forge system and make sure you have a reservation for the equipment as well as, as have started your session in Forge. But assuming that is done and you come to the tool, you should first do a bit of a visual check to ensure everything is in its in proper idle state. So as part of the proper idle state, uh, you can come over here and see that everything uh, is clean and as uh, you usually would find it. Nothing appears out of the ordinary. Uh, you can look at the bottom of the transformer, make sure that is off. You can also verify that the temperature controller and anomalous temperature monitoring unit, uh, all switches are off as well as verify the Exmer photon source being off. Lastly, you want to check on the main bonding unit that everything is off or in the down position. Two more things are needed to be checked. Uh, the first one is over here. Nitrogen regulator, which goes to the equipment. It should also be closed and in the off position or zero PSI. And I can now take you over to the equipment chase where we'll check the last of the remaining checks to make sure that the tool is in proper idle state. Now before entering the chase make sure you visually inspect that there's nothing out of the ordinary, no water on the floor, no oil on the floor, uh, that you're checking for any visual and audio clues that something could be wrong. So coming into the chase here in room 1402 you want to come down to the end of the hallway and be careful where you are stepping and walking because it is tight. But make your way down to the end here and you'll see the clean dry air or CDA regulator and on and off switch. So the switch or valve should be closed and you should have a reading of zero PSI on the nitrogen regulator.
Now that we have verified that the Yushio bonder is in its proper idle state, we may begin using the tool. To begin using the tool, you need to set up the initial conditions. One of the first things you can do is turn on the transformer. You can see the red light here as well as verify that it came on. Next, you can turn on the Yushio main bonding unit. The on-off switch here is up top. After which you can turn on the temperature controllers if you are going to use them. A lot of processes you may not need to heat up the substrate, but if you are going to use anything but room temperature and heat it up, you would turn on by each of the power switches. And they may take a few seconds to come on. The next thing you can do is turn on the nitrogen and CDA facilities. Here at the nitrogen regulator, we will need to turn it on to allow nitrogen to flow to the system. Now remember, the regulator part here should never be adjusted. This adjusts the set point. We only want to turn it on or off usually. And so here we will turn it on. And we can see that the dial went from 0 PSI up to the set point of 25 to 30 PSI. Now be sure to follow the instructions of the SOP or standard operating procedures because this needs to flow for about five minutes before you do any processing with the excimer photon source. It's important for the system as well as the health to the operator. Remaining item, just like to check, is the CDA. You'll come over and turn this valve and verify the PSI, which should be about 80 PSI here. Now before we proceed with the next step of the SOP, I want to introduce you to a few components in here. So right here we have the workpiece setting table. This is the suction side and this is the pressurizing side. And it can open and close. So this is entire unit is the workpiece setting table. This is called the suction side because you'll notice several ports here. And the ports that are open are sucking or under vacuum when you flip on the vacuum switch. You can take a wrench and maneuver these around or remove some or add some depending on your sample. You'll also notice some alignment points. These alignment points match up on the pressurizing side so that if you need to do any alignment between two bonded surfaces you can use them for reference. Back here we have what's called the adjustment lever and mechanical stop. In this position the mechanical stop is in and in this position the mechanical stop is out. And these two will be used to adjust and set your desired pressure or force in newtons when you decide to bond your substrate together. Over to the right here is the locking mechanism. So when the workpiece setting table is closed, or in the manual it's referred to as reversed, um, so this action here is reversing the workpiece suction table. And here with the locking mechanism, once you have the workpiece setting table closed, you can shift that piece over like that, and then push on the lever here until it is finger tight that locks it securely in place. To unlock, you can push on the lever and flip open.
So the photon source has the three positions. This is sort of its home position. We have the workpiece setting position over the pressurizing side, and then the section over the suction side. To move it, what you do is push the plunger. That allows free motion. You can move it to the position. Push it back down to lock. Make sure you push it down properly and you'll find that it locks. So whichever position you move it to, you can then take the extendable cover held by this temporary stop and maneuver these parts here. So you pull these through, twist, and let it fall in place for both of them. And it clicks into place. So now the extendable cover is closed and this is how it would look when you irradiate. Okay, now that you are familiar with some of the components in the system, after verifying that the system is in proper idle state, and initializing everything like we have done, you may need to adjust the stage height depending on your, the thickness of your substrate. So if you need to do that, there are various parts here in this parts box. And the details of this we'll go over through the manual and through other training. But we'll use spacers of these different shapes and sizes. So depending on the thickness that you will be bonding, you may need to adjust the stage height. Those spacers go in the following locations. One pair or set here, or here, and here. You will remove this screw and that screw to install them or remove them. A second set are here. They're really difficult to see but I'm trying to point them out here with the wrench and over here on this side. The screw here and the screw on top here will be removed to add or remove these spacers. The last set of spacers are located here and the screw to add or remove them will be here. Once you have set the stage height by adding or removing the appropriate spacers, you can then get your samples. I just have some dummy samples here and load them in the appropriate positions of the workpiece setting table. Reminder, if you need to align, you can use the alignment points on both sides. Now, because you will be reversing the workpiece setting table, you'll need to turn on the suction. To do that, you will come to the side of the photobonding unit and the middle toggle switch here, labeled air pressure, you can turn on. You'll see the green light. And you may also notice a bit of sound coming from the vacuum. Before you flip or reverse the workpiece setting table though, you may want to use this instrument as if you have set the temperature of these tables to a high temperature, they may be warm or hot. As well, before you flip, you need to make sure this mechanical stop is in the in position. Furthermore, you need to verify that the table is down. And you want to keep it down. For demonstration purposes, you can also verify by putting it up. And you will notice it go up and bringing it back down. That way you know for sure it is in the down position. Once you have checked the mechanical stop in and the table down, and again your stage 
spacers are installed for the correct height and the suction is on. You can reverse the workpiece setting table or flip it closed. Lock it with that locking me mechanism. And come check your force and newtons. Then you will want to reset or set this to zero. You have to hold the button for that to happen. Now that you have your force at zero or 0 0.1 after you've zeroed it out, you can raise the stage and notice you'll have a certain force between your samples. If you want to adjust that force in newtons, you can come over into the main bonding unit and use the adjustment lever. Now I will refer you to look into details on this in the SOP as it gives you nice cutout images of how this works. But essentially, when you raise this mechanism and turn it in one direction, it may increase or decrease the force. But you will want to do it a few times. So you will raise it, bring it one direction, release. Bring it back, raise it, the other same direction, release. What it does is it, it connects with a, a serration and it's like a screw or a ratchet or a socket wrench. So again, up and over. Just bring it to the other side, up and over. You also have the option to go the other direction and reverse the increase or decrease of the force in Newton's. You can go up and over, up and over, and one more time, up and over. So depending on the force in Newton's that you desire, you can do that a few times in either direction to set your desired force. Once your desired force is set, you can bring the stage back down, come on over to the workpiece setting table, and we're going to open it up. So to first open it up, we want to unlock the locking mechanism. And because things may be hot again, be a little careful. And the next step will be to irradiate your surfaces. And then presuming you want to irradiate this surface first, you will want to move the lamp house unit over top of this. Alternatively, obviously, if you want to irradiate this piece first, you can move here first and do it that way. We we'll presume we want to do this irradiation first. So to do that, again, push down on the plunger so it can move freely. In this case, make sure the stage is fully up because the height is set for the pressurizing side when the stage is fully up. So it is down right now. So again, bring it up. Now the stage is in the up position. Bring the lamp house unit into this position. Make sure the plunger gets in there securely. Again, move the temporary stop. Use the extendable cover. It helps the hold here a bit. Twist, let go. Twist, it drops in, and you can check it's secure. Now there are two ways to irradiate your samples. And they're basically a manual way and an automatic way. So over here at the Eximer Photon Source, the manual way I speak of is we will start the source with the green button and after our desired time stop it manually with the red button. Alternatively, the automatic mode, you can turn the timer from off to on and use the timer here. So in this case it's set for five minutes and you can modify that to your liking. In this case, once the timer has run to zero seconds, the radiation will stop automatically. And again, in the other mode, you will need to stop with the red button yourself manually. So, I will have my timer ready, and we'll do a few seconds of irradiation now. To do so, 
I'll turn the power supply on. We have a green button that illuminated. And with my timer ready, I will press the green lamp button. We have a red light here. And you can verify that you are irradiating. The UV light is on by looking through one of the viewports. And you can see there a bit of a purple light and tinge. So once you have that irradiating for your desired time, usually on the order of a few minutes or less, when your timer is up, you can come over and hit the red stop button. The light will go off. And you can verify that indeed the UV lamp is off. No more light, no more purple. And it's just dark. You can then turn your power supply off. Or if you were leaving it for a few minutes to do the next sample, you can leave it on. With the power supply off, you can then open up the extendable cover. Yeah, first we'll start here actually. Again, you pull up and twist. It's easier to do one at a time, I guess. Now this is loose. This is where the extendable cover comes in handy. Or the stop, sorry. And I'll want to move this back to what I call the home position. Or if you are doing multiple surfaces, which you may very likely do, you can move it to the next position that you haven't yet irradiated. Now that your substrates have been irradiated, or their surfaces at least, we can then close the workpiece setting table and initiate the bonding. Now remember the bonding occurs immediately, so you'll want to make sure that the pressurizing side is in the down position. You can verify that here with the gap, and also the toggle switch again, it's in the down position. So reverse the workpiece setting table. Get the locking mechanism. And once you raise it back up the table, the bonding begins. And so you want to get your timer ready and leave it there for as long as you need to. So now the bonding has begun. You will not see anything visually, but you can set your timer and bond for your desired amount of time. Once you have left it bonding for the desired amount of time, you can then stop the bond and, and move the stage back down. Use the unlocking mechanism to unlock. And again, careful things may be a little bit warm or hot. And you may want to use tweezers. In this case, it's a dummy sample. And you'll find that your sample is bonded quite nicely to your material. Now you can repeat that procedure to bond all the samples you need to bond. But once you are done bonding, you need to put the tool back in its proper idle state. So you can take a look and see that this setup here is in its proper idle state. But you will need to turn everything off and make sure the stage is down, suction is off. The main unit you can turn off, verify that it goes off. You can turn off the temperature controller and anomalous temperature monitoring unit by flipping the rocker switches here. Verify that your power supply is off. And you want to come down and turn off the red transformer. Verify it comes off. And just like before, you'll want to turn off the nitrogen and CDA. So the nitrogen, again, do not touch the regulator. Use this valve here and turn it completely off, finger tight. And you should see zero PSI.
We'll do the same thing in the, in the back chase for the CDA. And so remember this is the CDA that was set for 80 PSI. We can turn it off here at the valve and verify that the reading goes down to zero. So once you have turned off the CDA in the chase, you should double check that you've left the area clean and you've left everything in its proper idle state. Also, make sure you have recorded your work in the equipment logbook. And only after those items are done, can you then go into the forge system and end your session. Now this concludes the Yushio photo bonding training video. Please be sure to read, the, read through and utilize the standard operating procedures. And like always, if anything doesn't go according to plan, procedure, or training, contact staff. Thank you.